Okay, let's talk about math that our eyes love. So what could I possibly be talking about? Well, I'm going to be talking about a particular um, mathematical concept that goes as far back as the Greeks. It might, might even uh, be older than that. But uh, in particular, it has to do with uh, these columns right here. All right, kind of just showing you the gap in between these columns. Of course, this is my little sketch. And uh, you might be saying to yourself, hmm, what am I talking about? Well, I'm going to explain this here in a second. But this particular uh, concept, all right, uh, is a number. It's a value that is not only an architecture, it's an art. And this is like some of the most uh, beautiful art and architecture, you know, ever constructed throughout history. Okay, so it's a particular number, a particular value that comes up over and over again. And it also comes up over and over again in nature. Okay, it comes up in nature, it comes in architecture, it comes up uh, in even like financial markets. So, you know, there's uh, quite a bit of um, connection between our real experience, our natural world, and mathematics that uh, sometimes it's really not... Um, you know, we don't know why, but there are these connections here. And this particular thing that I'm going to be talking about is one of these things that is definitely worthy for you to know about. Okay, so I'm going to quickly explain what's going on between these columns, okay, and what could I possibly be talking about? Well, not that difficult to understand. I'm going to show you this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in about a week. And I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, CLEP, uh, exam, Accuplacer, Alex exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam, and many other type of exams. All those exams have math on them. So if you don't uh, do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So let me help you out, get through, and get uh, uh, flying colors on your exam. Just go to my website and check out my full course catalog. If I do not have what you uh, need, Drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool math learning system. And then obviously help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to be great in mathematics, then you got to be great at this. And that is note taking. OK, so it's just one of these chores that you got to do. It's just the disciplines, the everyday discipline that uh, it, there is no shortcuts. OK, so if you think you have a photographic memory like ah, I don't have to take notes, well, you're going to pay a price. So let me just uh, spare you the pain of a bad grade. Take great notes. So I've been teaching math for decades. All right. And it's just apparent to me that those students who take excellent notes almost always do extremely well. And the reverse is true. OK, so don't uh, don't think that you can, you know, cheat this uh, system. There's just some things in nature in our natural role that you have to do to perform. And this is one of them. Maybe there's like point zero 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 one percent of the population that could just, you know, to truly have a photographic memory. But, uh, you know, I haven't come across too many students like that over decades of teaching math. All right, so as you're improving your note-taking, you can use my notes, which would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get to this uh, thing that I'm going to be talking about, which is uh, called the golden ratio or golden rectangle. So uh, and it's an extremely interesting concept. So in between the uh, and this Greek... Um, uh, architecture right here between the columns like right in here we have these rectangles right so these rectangles have a particular dimension uh, to them these are in fact what we call golden rectangles and a rectangle obviously is like this it's not a square all right so um, what makes a golden rectangle okay uh, a golden rectangle is it has a particular ratio between its length and width so I'm going to show you that right now, and this is really going to define what we're talking about. Okay, so here is uh, a rectangle, and he, uh, this is what would define a golden rectangle. All right, so here we can construct a ratio. So let's take the length over the width, 
And if we set that equal to the length plus the width, so we're going to make another uh, uh, ratio or another proportion here. So we're going to take the length and width. We're going to add them together and divide that by the length. Okay. If we set these two things equal to one another, this is, in fact, the golden ratio. Okay. And this right here is uh, uh, obviously a rectangle that we can construct a golden ratio. Uh, golden rec rectangle from okay, but this is the golden ratio now Maybe right now it doesn't make a lot of sense But what I could do if I was so inclined I could actually solve this equation here and when you do this Okay, you come up with an actual value All right, so now this is going to start making a little bit more sense So here is our golden ratio and when we solve this thing the value turns out to be this uh, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. This is, in fact, uh, uh, what we call the golden ratio. Okay, you can express it algebraically like this. And this is really uh, approximately this decimal right here, 1.618. Okay, so you're saying, all right, I got a, this, I got this. What does this mean? Okay, well, I'm going to get to this a little bit more, all right? So, uh, but this is, in fact, again, the golden uh, ratio. And you could see it. Uh, numerically like this so like 1.618 approximately of course this decimal continues on but here is an essence of what it is so let's say um, let's take a look at this ratio so if I have one let's think of a rectangle this is my rectangle think of the whole thing right here so the rectangle is formed by one over here and 1.618 uh, right there okay so this notice is my golden um, uh, ratio. All right. So this would be the width. This would be the length. And uh, this is this follows the definition of the golden ratio. Now, what I can do is just break up this square. So this is one. OK, so one plus 0.618 is 1.618. Uh, OK, so this is the golden ratio. But here you have this square part one and one. Right. This is one and this is one. All right, so, but what I want you to focus in on is uh, this 0.618 part and one, okay? This part right here, okay? So this particular rectangle is, in fact, a golden, um, a golden rectangle. So this whole thing is a golden rectangle. This right here is a golden rectangle. And this particular dimensions, okay, has a lot of application in architecture for whatever reason it seems to be very very appealing to the eye now maybe my video isn't uh, doing that uh, justice but dimensions of um, in art and architecture in nature I can the list goes on and on and on and on and on if you actually kind of look it up and just read about the golden ratio you'll see you know like infinite applications of this thing all right and it's like wow just interesting to see how numbers and relationships, you know, have such an impact in our natural world. This kind of reminds me of another number that you may not be familiar with, and that is uh, E. Okay, this is the natural base, and this thing has a lot of application in the real world as well. So, you know, mathematics is not just some abstract thing that we study. There is connection to our actual experiences, especially for patterns that repeat in nature, et cetera, et cetera. So there's other things as well. Um, some of you may or may not know, I, I got to do a video on this called, uh, something called the Fibonacci numbers. So let's say the stock market, here's the stock market, things go down and they come back up and they go back down. So, uh, um, traders, okay, use, um, things called the Fib, Fib numbers, Fibonacci numbers. And again, these are things that are found in nature, uh, mathematical concepts that are found in nature that actually help people kind of predict where, you know, uh, stocks are going to trade. All right now, I'm going to, again, I'm going to make a video specifically on the Fibonacci uh, numbers. But, uh, you know, again, mathematics and its relationship to the real world is, um, it's definitely there, okay? And uh, the golden ratio is just one of those things that, you know, is aesthetically pleasing. Okay, at least that's what I've been told. And for myself, you know, when I look at things, I'm like, wow, th that dimension just seems to be a nice dimension, uh, you know, to construct a building or, you know, artwork or whatnot. So, again, when you look at, um, you know, various architecture, 
just kind of ask yourself, hmm, does that ratio seem to be about 1 to 1.6? 1. Uh, I think you can just use 1.6 to round things off. And if it is, it's probably because somebody was using that golden ratio. It's definitely applied. Um, you know, this is not like ancient history. This is stuff that's being used today. All right, so if you th thought this little video was interesting and not a uh, waste of your time, at least hopefully I did it somewhat of a justice. I don't want to get too deep into the mathematics of it because you know, it takes away from the essence of the meaning of it, but to hopefully I did a fair job. And if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Uh, have over a thousand uh, plus videos on my channel, Basic to Advanced Mathematics. So my goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. That's what I'm trying to do, right? Nobody, by the way, should be failing math. If you're having a tough time in mathematics, okay, work on your uh, disciplines, work on your note-taking, talk to your math teacher. But if you need more help uh, beyond that and you like my teaching style, please watch my videos, that's what I make them for. Uh, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.